What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In our last video, I did a full external teardown of our K24A2 for our Subaru BRZ engine swap. And I did that in preparation to replace our timing chain and all of the guides and tensioners and everything like that. In addition to replacing our oil pump with uh, an Acura Type S oil pump. Also reinstalling our new aftermarket oil pan for the swap. Let's do it. All right, so first things first is we need to get the top cover off of the engine first so we can get access to the cams and then we'll work our way down. Now, what I highly recommend you do, anytime you're taking bolts off, nuts or bolts that you plan to reuse, little Ziploc bag, Sharpie, mark it so that way that you'll pretty much never, unless you lose the bag altogether, you shouldn't really uh, have to worry about losing too much of your hardware. And so I'm just using a long 3 8 extender to go down in here to get at one of the spark plugs. There we go. Just like that, you've got one of your spark plugs pulled out. There we go. So our VTEC lobes look pretty dang good. I mean, this is supposed to be a, uh, a low mile JDM engine, but you never know. So yeah, I mean, this chain looks in pretty dang good condition so far. This next part is going to be arguably the single most difficult phase of this entire job. Getting this crank pulley off is notoriously difficult on Honda engines. Jesus Christ. So, uh, that didn't work. The four cylinders, the six cylinders, pretty much all of them have a really, really difficult time getting this bolt off. Nothing. Maybe? I don't know if this is really gonna have enough leverage to, to, to try to do it. Come on. <clears throat> Not trying to like, knock my engine off the stand. <clears throat> I have finally had some success with getting this bolt off retain that to the best of your ability. And so it's this little rectangular uh, pin here. So you wanna hold on to that because when your pulley goes onto the front, this slides into the slot for the crankshaft and holds the pulley in its proper rotational spot mode. That's a worse problem. Who would have thought that the oil supply valve would have oil in it? So what this guy is, is your VTEC oil control valve. Okay. 
and that was a freaking task and a half. We wanna make sure that our timing is right and that our timing is not going to move. And that is where this cam lock tool comes in. These are made at an appropriate length to be able to reach both of these. And what you can do is you slot these into those holes as long as they're aligned with the body of your head. And so what that basically means is that if you connect this rotating disc to this fixed piece, that means that this whole camshaft is not going to be able to rotate. Okay. All right. So now we can take our top guide off and we'll get these three 10 mils off. Get this lifted up over the top and dropped down under. No. Oh no, that's so much oil. Oh crap. Damn it. So now we can focus on getting our oil pan off. And so now the old oil pan comes off, revealing the stock oil pump, oil pump gear and all of that. This tensioner is gonna come out of place. So to get the oil pump off, you have two 12 millimeter bolts at the front and then two 14 millimeter bolts at the back. Oh, there we go, okay, so we're out. We are outie. There we go. So now our gear pretty much is free hanging. This little piece is also gonna to need to come off because we have a new windage tray that's gonna cover the full length of this. Well, um, I've got a problem. You are f***ing joking, dude. When I was unscrewing this and I went to lift it out, it slipped and fell down this hole. That hole goes through the block to the head of the engine. If you don't know, you don't want random loose bolts rattling around inside the head or the block of your engine. Praying that if I flip this over, that that bolt is gonna fall right back out of there. If it doesn't, if that, if that bolt does not fall out, I may have to disassemble not disassemble, but I may have to remove the head of the engine, completely separate the head from the block, which is, again, it's all nuts and bolts. It's all just time spent. That's not one of those out of sight, out of mind kind of things. That's one of those, get that bolt out of there right now. Once I turn the engine over, it fell about halfway and kind of had to, uh, it, it kind of got itself lodged sideways a little funny. So all I did was I took my stock, you know, oil dipstick, flip it down there very carefully through that hole and uh, kind of wriggle it around until it, <laughs> until that bolt came loose. This little oil jet right here, that actually needs to come out. Yes! Ha. All right, let's make sure that doesn't fall. So what I ended up doing was I used a 5 64th drill bit. So that is the little guy. It's got this little O-ring and that's, it was just kind of slipping inside the O-ring and that was causing it to be a bit difficult to get out. So now that we've got this, we can plug that with the included port. Obviously we can take all this tape off very carefully because of the metal shavings and everything. So let's move on. Just enough on the threads. Doesn't have to be like a crazy, super crazy amount to go on there. Just enough to be able to get all the way around there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was literally a, t a hundred times easier with like 
one extra link or two extra links. I'm assuming that this chain is made to be able to fit this oil pump as the gear probably sits like uh, like four millimeters higher than the stock one. You can see there's a, a slightly raised edge on the block here and that is preventing this from sitting down all the way. Let's do it. Here's how much I did. I only just cut off that teeny little corner, but you can see that little notch that I took out right here, this little kind of 90 degree corner here. And it was previously hitting on this little ledge, but now that that's cut out, that's good to go. Now your oil pump is bolted in, now we're gonna do a windage tray. Number six. I need to locate the hole, the location for where that hole needs to be drilled, and then drill it before I can get this thing installed on there. Try and effectively drop this thing on as flat as possible without the dipstick falling out. I'm gonna hold my knee under it so that if it does start to fall, Okay, it just tapped it. That little black spot right here. So I've got my hole drilled right here, as you can see on the inside. And uh, I actually did end up using a step drill bit. So the hole needed to be half an inch and the bottom, the bottom width of this is half an inch. So what I'm looking for is for this to make, yeah, so that's making some contact. Aha! Let me just peep under here and see if it's... Yes. All right. It is going through that hole. That will work. And now I'm just remembering that I need to change out this cam here. Now, what this is going to do is going to allow your VTEC to actuate in a longer range, a wider range of your power band. So I think I've, I've gotten it sorted out. Um, the new chain that I just bought, like I showed you guys a second ago, was just, you know, three millimeters maybe shorter than the old stock one. And the old stock one could hit all of these timing marks, but there was some extra slack right here, right before it gets to the crank gear. And so, you know, I could put tension on it here with the tensioner, but there would still be this slack. And so what I basically would have had to do was rotate the crank to be able to keep the mark on the gear correct and to take out that slack, but then my um, arrow on the gear and my arrow on the block would not have matched. And so I was like, oh, you're not really top dead center, you're a couple of degrees off of top dead center. So, you know, I spent the almost 150 bucks to just get a proper chain. Now we can go through, I had already reinstalled this top guide which is just the, uh, the two 12 millimeter bolts that we took off earlier when we took this stock one off, although I did replace the guide. We already had this in place, these three 10 mil bolts. We had this one a six millimeter hex bolt in place, but we had not put our tensioner on yet. So now that everything is pretty much bolted in and in place, this tensioner is without, without even pulling the little red pin on this to engage that tensioner cylinder. Everything's nice and tight. We've got all of our lines marked up, top dead center. That's right, that's right. Everything's nice and secure. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my torque wrench. I'm gonna tighten all of these 10 millimeter bolts down to nine foot pounds, including this um, hex bolt, uh, six mil hex bolt. So that'll get down to nine foot pounds. And then these two 12 millimeter bolts on the top for the top guide 
those will get tightened down to 16 foot-pounds. There we go. The 10 millimeter at nine foot-pounds for everything else. The next step in buttoning all of this stuff up is to get your timing cover back on. Now, um, I have an aftermarket Skunk 2 timing cover, which is super slick. As you guys can see, this thing is a gorgeous piece of billet aluminum. We've got one continuous bead all the way around, circling every single hole. Boys, it's starting to look like an engine. <laughs> And there you have it. Oil pan is on. Let's go. I've got the top half of my cover all gasket materialed up. We're almost done. We're so close I can freaking taste it. All right, so we've got our hardware. There's one guy up at the top. Yeah, you can see it kind of squeezing out here around the edges, but that's fine. That's what you want. We are done. <laughs> This is taking me so long. This is gonna be a different color, but I mean, come on. That Skunk 2 timing cover is sick. I still need to get it cleaned up. Dude, sheesh. That's so clean. Well, it's not clean, but it's sick. That oil pan, that front sump, man. Still a lot of work left to do, I got I got a different water pump. I got to get all new accessories. If you know what you're doing and you have a good idea of if you've ever done anything like this before, you're going to be able to do it a lot faster than I did. Um, I was, you know, getting super, super nervous about the timing chain and, and how the camshafts might, you know, I was like, I don't want to bend any valves and everything, um, which may not have really been that big of a concern because of the fact that, you know, the crank's not turning, but Oh, it, uh, it, was, it was pretty stressful for me. So I was taking way too much time to be able to go through and do all of this stuff. So if you found this helpful, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. I spent a lot of time trying to set this thing up for you guys. Um, if you wanna follow my personal build and how this whole thing's going, if you wanna see more, if you wanna see how the rest of this is gonna unfold with all the accessories going on and replacing the VTEC solenoid, the turbo setup, that's gonna be a little bit complicated with getting the right sensors and everything, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got big goals for 2021, not only for this build, but also for growing the channel as well. So if you guys wanna stick around, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, Build your dreams.